What's up guys, it's The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be doing another first shots. This one might be a little bit more complicated than usual. Uh, we've had some complications for this firearm, but what we're gonna be shooting today is going to be the Tommy Built T36C. And if you are not aware of what these are, uh, they're essentially American-made G36s, or at the very least, extremely close to a G36. As close as you can get in the United States without going through an awful lot of trouble. So, I actually picked this guy up from Brownells. I have no affiliation with Brownells or with Tommy Built, uh, or with most of the firearm manufacturers that we review on here. And uh, I try to give guns the benefit of the doubt. Usually when I go do a first shots video, I literally take it right out of the box, load the first mag, and shoot it. However, this thing is so cool, uh, I wanted to shoot it a little bit before uh, when my wife wasn't around to film it. And when we did, we ran into some issues. Uh, so before I talk about those, we'll go into what the actual firearm is. So this is basically a G36C. Uh, it is a very close clone of the uh, service weapon that served in at least Germany for sure and a lot of other European countries for many years. I believe Germany recently replaced these. So this is a pistol, not a rifle, and it has a foldable uh, brace system on the back of it that uh, you might not be able to get uh, after election day. So uh, if you're not aware of the pistol brace issue, uh, go in and investigate that. There's a lot of good videos on it. Uh, so the, the firearm itself came with just the pistol and I've added some things. I got this from uh, Brownells uh, right out of the uh, box and it came with a bag, one magazine, and no manual at all. You have to go online and download the manual. Not extremely difficult, but still kind of eh for a very expensive gun, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, that was kind of a shot. Shock, I should say. So I went and got the brace, which I got from HK Parts. This is a brace that goes on an actual G36. And then I went and added the uh, the tail hook uh, Mod 1 brace as well. Sorry for the wind here. We didn't have any wind a second ago. And all of a sudden it's picking up like crazy because this is Iowa and we have tons of wind. So sorry about that. We're hiding behind a building trying to uh, get away from the wind, but it is what it is. Hollow Sun 403B. I just happen to have this red dot available. It's got some kick-ass iron sights on it but uh, we're gonna be using the red dot primarily for accuracy. It's got a three position safety on it there. Uh, honestly, these are just both semi-automatic. It's just there to look cool, I believe, and uh, be more like the original. Bolt release is right here inside the trigger guard. Not a huge fan of that, but obviously I am an American and I'm used to an American battery of arms, so that's probably more of a personal preference thing than anything. Magazine uh, uh, release is right there. So similar to an AK, but you don't have to rock them in. You can slam them both in. Uh, pin system, just like the AR. The rear pin uh, is removable. I'm not sure about the front pin. I haven't pulled it out yet. Uh, it has a uh, gas system or a gas piston in it. Uh, kind of a hybrid system with a rotating bolt in it. And uh, it has an ambi charging handle here, which I think is a really cool design, honestly. So if you can see there, you can pull it to the left or you can pull it to the right and it doesn't get in the way during the operation of the firearm. Didn't come with these rails. I bought these rails aftermarket. Uh, these are polymer rails. I think it looks more traditional with that on it, honestly. And uh, it's got a 9.4 inch 5.56 barrel. And the 5.56 designation is very important because since this is a G36 and it's not made for American 223 ammunition, if you shoot 223 ammunition, you will probably have some issues, and we did. And since it didn't come with a manual, and I'm a bit of a hillbilly, and I don't read manuals anyway, of course I started out shooting uh, 223 with it, and we had uh, almost no functionality whatsoever. It would just shoot one and then uh, jam right away, so it was a single shot. So, went in, did some investigation, looked up online. Many people have been having these issues because many people try to shoot 223 out of them. Uh, a couple of my buddies included and we found out that it's made primarily for 5.56 ammo, which makes a whole lot of sense since it is a NATO gun. So of course, during this ammo crisis, I had to source some 5.56 ammunition, which was a huge pain in the ass. I ended up with Winchester M855, which is 5.56, 62 grain, standard NATO ammunition. However, it also was not powerful enough to run the Tommy Built T36 successfully. And we couldn't get through a magazine without having issues. Part of that I hear is because it requires a break-in, so you might see some of those issues today. And also because it's just a little less powerful than it's what's required. I don't know if you saw in the box, but it is 3,060 feet per second, which is a lot hotter than your standard 223 ammunition. So I had to go find some new 5.56 ammo to shoot my gun, and I came up with PMC X-Tac, which is running at 3,000 
1,120 feet per second. I haven't had a chance to shoot this yet, but we have these loaded in three uh, Magpul G36 magazines. The G36 magazine that came with the gun was Magpul, so I assume that's what they want us to use, so I went out and sourced those as well. So hopefully this will run without issue. If not, you're gonna see them on camera. I'm fully aware that these guns can have a break-in period, and I'm fully aware there's gonna be some upset HK slash Tommy built uh, fanboys in the comment section if this does run into a malfunction talking about how I don't know how to use the rifle and all kinds of other stuff, pistol I should say. But this is a first shots video and I really wanna shoot this gun and if I'm gonna shoot this gun, I might as well have you guys come along for the ride. Also, an issue I have with firearms like this. I understand that this is a cool gun. I understand a lot of people buy this because it's in Call of Duty, video games. This is a very photogenic and kick-ass looking firearm, and that's why I bought it. I have a lot of AR-15s that run around $500 that can do the exact same thing as this gun, if not better, at least for me, according to my battery of arms. I'm fully aware of that. This is a firearm, in my opinion, that I bought just because it's super cool and I've always wanted to shoot one, and I've never had the opportunity. That being said, it's very expensive. We'll get to the price at the end of the video, but it's very expensive. And the fact that you have to break it in and pick what type of ammunition, and the fact that it doesn't come with the manual, it doesn't come with the brace system, it doesn't come with a lot of things out of the box, ah, put a little bad taste in my mouth right off the bat. So hopefully this, this uh, through the course of this video, it will run awesome, and I'll have a great time, and hopefully it'll change my opinion. But I am the Honest Outlaw for a reason, so I'm just giving you my honest opinions. I'm not trying to do any negative uh, publicity or anything like that towards Tommy Built. Uh, they're a great company. I hear they have great customer service. As a matter of fact, when he saw my Instagram video of me having issues, not only did he offer some advice on how to make it run correctly, but he also offered for me to send it in for free, get it fixed, bring it back. And everyone else that I've ever heard that have had issues with this firearm, he has offered that as well. He's a small company, and I don't by any means mean to hurt his business by doing this video. I just want to shoot the gun, and whatever happens, happens. The uh, rail that goes on top of the G36 is uh, coming loose. So we put some Loctite on them, and we're gonna tighten them up here with a screwdriver. Fucking for real. That didn't take very long. Now we can't get the bolt unlocked. Okay, here we go again. That didn't take very long. Same malfunction we had before. This is that PMC 3120 feet per second. That's disheartening. I was really hoping this was gonna work well. Three, three inches low. You gotta remember the height over bore here at 10 yards is gonna be like three inches. So what I try to do when I zero the rifles for the channel is I try to get it relatively close with a three shot group. I know I need to move it over uh, left just one and then I should be pretty close on, then what we do is we go back. I like to do a 50 yard zero for most 5.56 guns, and uh, 50 yards pretty close to 200 yards, and uh, gives you kind of point of, uh, point of impact on site uh, out to two or even 300 yards. So I like a 50 yard zero, so that's what we're gonna go back and do now. But I just like to get close, because I don't want to walk back and forth from 50 yards a whole bunch of times, because I'm a lazy ass. Okay. Alright. Now the problem with a uh, foldable uh, brace system, for at least for me, I'm a big guy, I like the fact that you can fold it, it can be super compact, and the G36, T36 can actually run folded as well, which is super cool. So if you pulled it out of a bag or something you had to fire right away without unfolding the brace or a stock, you could run it. The downside of that is foldable stocks usually are not collapsible, and I prefer a collapsible because I'm a big guy, I'm 6'4", and when I get down into a prone position, I like to have the stock expanded as much as possible on an AR-15 buffer system. And uh, guns like this, uh, AKs, stuff like that, they just don't provide that ability to customize it to my big old uh, uh, ogre ass. So it's a little more uncomfortable shooting it prone. I gotta kinda put my hand back there and do some funky shit.
feel it and the, uh, recoil the gun. So these are G36 mags, they're new. So the springs shouldn't be an issue. I did notice on the other magazines uh, of the uh, Winchester uh, M855 that we would have more and more malfunctions as the magazine would come to an end. Uh, which would lead me to believe the gun just needs to be broken in a little bit more, the ammunition needs to be a little more powerful to, to really pop the bolt back and give it enough dwell time to cycle the round. At least for me, I'm not a G36 expert, one of the issues with an AR-15 uh, having like a 9.3 inch uh, barrel for instance, the reason why they don't go below 10.5 is usually because it doesn't have enough dwell time to uh, run the uh, platform properly. So I don't know if it's just a mixture of everything coming together to kind of screw me over. Uh, however, uh, I was really hoping this ammunition would work. Uh, it could be a factor that it's just both ammunitions are still not powerful enough to run the gun. But in an ammo crisis like now, it's, it's very difficult to find very powerful 5.56 ammo. Even this stuff that we're shooting right now is a dollar a round. I'm coming, I'm coming, I got these short legs. <laughs> All right, so this was our original 10-yard uh, group standing offhand, right there. And this was our first uh, five, 50 yard group right here. So bang, bang, bang. That's actually a pretty decent group for uh, as little as I was trying to get a pretty decent group. So I'd say the accuracy of that's on par. Uh, considering how heavy that trigger is, it's a little difficult for me. I'm a, uh, I'm spoiled when it comes to rifles because I have a lot of custom AR-15 triggers and a lot of times I'll just throw them into whatever gun we're shooting. Uh, that trigger is abysmal though, and uh, it's got a weird kind of two-stage thing going on where you pull the first one and you, and you kind of flinch a little bit and you kind of have to relax and pull all the way through. But for a 9.4 inch barrel with a red dot at 50 yards into the sun with a 10, 15 mile hour wind, I will definitely take that group. So what we have to do is move it up one, two, three, four inches. And then uh, I was splitting the right a little bit. First time splitting the left a little bit. The second time we'll probably leave the left to right and we'll move it up four inches and uh, we'll be good to go. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna shoot around a little bit, and if I have malfunctions, I have malfunctions. Uh, hopefully we'll just break the gun a little bit, put a couple hundred rounds through it, have some fun, and uh, get used to clearing malfunctions, most likely, but we'll have to see. Like I said, I just, it's hard for me to believe it's just the ammo, because this is the same stuff it's been doing to every single uh, type of ammo I've tried. And this is the most powerful 5.56 I have, so it just kind of makes me sad, because this is going to be a sweet video, we're probably going to end up having to cut it short. Yeah. What really sucks is that it's like pretty right. accurate. It is really accurate. It'd be a real cool gun if it functioned every time. I mean, it's got those Call of Duty looks, that's for sure. Try to run this magazine out and uh, try some of that Winchester green tip. That seemed to be running a little bit better yesterday. Remember, we got a full mag out of that one. Okay. All right, so what we'll do uh, is we'll load this full of some uh, M855 green tip because it was running out a little bit better the other day. And uh, like I said, what we'll have to do is after this, I'm gonna probably just send it to Tommy Built and see what they're gonna say. 
I'm running ammo that suggests that at least they say run hotter 5.56 ammo. And I know this is actually less power than the other stuff, but it seemed to be running better yesterday. So I'm just gonna give it a try. I'm gonna load it completely full too. That way it's got the max spring pressure. It's not completely full, but 28 rounds. I just don't want to short half mag it and have uh, people complaining about that. I don't know if you can tell, but I really want this gun to work because I like how it looks and I like how it feels and it has a real cool factor to it. And the sad reality is, is it's near impossible to source a G36 from any other company in any other way. So it's kind of the only shot I get to playing Call of Duty in real life. What happened? Did you see it? Did it even? It didn't even chamber around that time. Seems like it's skipping right over it. Again, these are Magpul uh, G36 magazines. This is actually the one that came with the gun. And then we have two others that are exactly the same. We've been running different mags too to try to eliminate that as a variable. But there's just not that many G36 mags. With an AR-15, I'd try uh, GI mags and all kinds of other stuff, but just not available. Likes that a little more at least. Just not picking it up every time. Oh, we even locked back. Oh, well, we might shit. have something here. Oh, it might be my fucking birthday after all. Party hard. Okay. All right, so we loaded that uh, green tip up with a little more ammo here. And then we pulled the uh, gun back and it failed to chamber around. It got stuck on the lip of the magazine or something it looked like. So I slingshotted it again and hopefully we have something. We'll have to see. Damn accurate though, I'm hitting those six inch plates no problem. You see in there, there uh, the bolts riding under the bottom of the round. When it strips the mag off, it kind of just gets stuck up in there. Take a look at the round and just see what's going on. Doesn't appear to be ripping the case or anything like that. Huh, very strange. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people in the comments that know exactly what's wrong. And uh, hopefully you'll tell me. All right. All right, so we've been out here about an hour now, shooting a little off camera, shooting a little on camera, trying a couple different types of ammo. Uh, we uh, The other day, I didn't have the brake on and we had just a flash hider, that didn't work. I like the brake on it, so I put the brake back on since it seemed to not make any difference. I uh, took the gun apart, put it back together, still having the exact same issues. So I gotta say it's most likely an ammunition uh, mag or magazine rifle compatibility issue. I'm gonna end up taking this and sending it back to Tommy Built, and I'll end up doing an update video for you guys. Uh, hard to say if we'll do a thousand on review, being is that it's like a dollar a shot. And uh, that's $1,000 for those who are counting. And that's a little bit much even for my reviews. Uh, the gun itself, if I hadn't told you the price yet, I kinda wanna leave it to the end, keep you suspicious, but it's about $3,000. As configured here, you're looking at about a $4,000 rifle. If you consider the 150, uh, 300, uh, 250, and 100, and then obviously each shot is about a dollar a round since you're shooting uh, 5.56 NATO, as opposed to 223, which is still like 75 cents a round right now, which is why you won't be seeing a whole lot of rifle reviews. Uh, I usually do a lot of pistol reviews, primarily because nine millimeter is cheap. It's not so cheap anymore, but I do have a whole bunch of it stacked up like those old people who buried gold in their yard, and uh, I've got a ton of it. I'm gonna have to make a Ford out of. And uh, so at least we'll have nine millimeter through 
throughout uh, the next year or so uh, on the channel. However, 556 I am a little bit short, obviously, because I don't uh, primarily stockpile this ammunition. Hopefully we'll get this figured out for you and hopefully we'll do a uh, follow-up video. I wanted to avoid putting this video out because I didn't want it to be like a hit piece on Tommy Built or anything like that. I'm sure there are plenty of rifles out there I've, I've seen reviews on that run just fine, however mine does not. So overall, uh, if you think you might know what's going on, you feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Uh, if you think I'm a dipshit, go ahead and put that down there as well. Uh, I also want to mention that we leave a link to a local homeless shelter in the description below. If you'd like to support that, I'd really appreciate it. Also in the description is a link to my uh, patron. Uh, patron followers uh, pay for a large portion of the ammunition and firearms that we buy here on the channel. So uh, I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. And if you want to join up, all you got to do is go in the description of the video, click the link, sign up. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.